Hi, my name is Jacob Johnson, and we're going to be installing Portworks on OpenShift version 3.7. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, docs.portworks.com. We're going to go to Container Orchestrators, Kubernetes, Install. And there's some prerequisites that we got to get done beforehand, and I'll cover those in just a second. But we're going to already did these, but I'm going to go to um, Install OpenShift and follow these instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, do this OC admin policy uh, to create the PX account in Cube System, and then the Portworx uh, PVC controller in Cube System. Uh, once we do that, we're going to generate our daemon set, and to generate our daemon set, we're going to go to install.portworx.com, and we can. It's a nice little tool that we use that we can say, hey, I want to use an OCI container or a Docker container. I'm going to use an OCI container. We're going to give the name of our uh, Portworx cluster. Our etcd servers, we can list them all out here. Um, and then we can segregate the data network traffic from the man management traffic if we wanted to. So I could put all of my data network traffic throwing through uh, E0 and then the management through ETH1. Or you don't have to do that. You could just have one, one, um, one network to do everything, which is fine also. And then we have this ability to um, support OpenShift. So you need to have this OSFT uh, checked so that we can have all the map points for OpenShift. So you could either do an OC apply or a kubectl apply against this uh, URL, or you could click on the URL, um, copy your daemon set, and then paste it into um, a YAML file on your, on your master server if you want. Um, I already did that, so I have my pxspec.yaml. I have my etcd service, my cluster name, and it has a dash x for Kubernetes. So once that's done, all I have to do is, number one, do my, um, my OC admin policies. And that's done. And then OC apply dash f on the pxspec.yaml. So that's going to go create uh, my daemon set and all my um, account information and everything's done through that and so why that's going what it's doing is it's it's launching I have um, I have a three node cluster two of which are workers one master so it's going to solve port works on these um, on the two uh, worker nodes so that's going to take a sec so while that's going we can go over all the prereqs that we need to have done so um, there's a shared mounts flag that we need to set um, in Docker version 112. So we got to um, remount the shared mounts flag. And then uh, firewall, we need to make sure that 9001 through 9015 are open on the Kubernetes nodes that are running Portworks. Make sure IP is all set up within those uh, nodes. And then uh, beforehand, you have to have an etcd or console for your KVDD for Portworks to use. And then storage. So at least one Portworks node needs storage, and this could be EBS volume. This could be a local drive, and a and this could be um, a SAN volume, or it could be a iSCSI volume. It doesn't matter. Um, Portworks just needs to see an own formatted drive that we can use, like a dev SD blah 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 device. And once that's done, we'll create virtual volumes from that um, from that device. So it's recommended that you have at least three um, Portworks servers with storage in them to form a quorum um, and you can grow it from three to a thousand nodes um, so we could start small and just grow as you want to grow and the other cool thing is that you could have nodes with storage and then have other nodes that don't have storage that are con that are con um, accessing the storage from the ones that do so it acts as like a, a virtual SAN for containers so let's go to the openshift web console and we'll go into cube system and see how we're doing if our um, pods are up and running. Okay, cool. So two Portworks pods are up and running. I'm going to copy this guy because um, I'm going to export it so I can use it for some CLI stuff that I'm going to show you here in a second. So another cool thing is that we can go to OpenShift. And then I'm going to create a sort. I already created the storage class. So I called it PX demo storage class. Uh, I have a replication factor of one. There's a whole bunch more things we can add into this um, storage class, and I will show you that here in a second. But first, we're going to spin up a MySQL 
uh, pod. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Go to my OpenShift web console. And I'm going to import a YAML. And I'm going to create a new project. I call it Digi1 OpenShift. I'm going to copy my um, JSON for my template. And I'm going to save this so I can use it for future use. So it brings up the persistent um, Portworx MySQL template. Uh, you could give a memory limit for your container, namespace, uh, database service name, and then you could have it generate all your connection information for you. And But more importantly, I'm going to change this to 15 gigs. And then I'm going to use the storage class that I already created called PXDemoSC. And then I could give labels. So I'll go ahead and create this guy. I'm going to copy all of this stuff for later. And once that's done, I can go into my project and I could see this guy getting spun up. It's going to take a second, but I could go to storage and I can see the PVC that it's using. So I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it on our CLI and show you some cool stuff. So let's go back to our CLI. And first thing I'm going to do so I'm going to export that container that I used, and now I can do some command line stuff. So I'm going to cube exact into um, our container, and I'm going to do a port work status. So it shows me those two nodes um, that I showed you through OC Git nodes, the two uh, worker nodes. So they're both they both have 100 gigs, and they're contributing um, 100 gigs to the cluster. So we have a total of 200 gigs that we can use. Um, I created that that um, storage class that only had replication factor of one on it here. But if I go to portworks.com, container orchestrators, Kubernetes, how to create PFC dynamic provisioning, there's a lot more uh, things we can add into um, this storage class. So for example, I could choose the file system I want to lay down. So default is ext4. We could use pick a XFS if we want to. I could change the block size. So the replication factor. So I had a replication factor of one beforehand. Um, so that means there's only one copy of that of that data. I could choose two, and that, that means I'm going to copy it to two nodes in the cluster. So I could have, um, a, it's going to do a synchronous copy um, to two nodes in the cluster, or I could choose three nodes in the cluster and have three copies of that data. So two servers could go down, and I could have my um, data still available on that third node. Um, we have this shared flag that we have that is pretty cool because you can take it and say, hey, I want to have this volume and I want to give it to multiple containers simultaneously. And they all can read and write to that same volume. Um, so a great um, use case for that is uh, WordPress. And another cool thing is um, snap interval. So we can say, hey, take a snapshot of this volume every hour. And then I could use that snapshot to... Um, roll back if I had to in a, in a disaster kind of scenario, or I could use that to uh, snap to mount it to another container that the container can use to test out the data, test upgrades, or do any kind of testing you want to test with it. So let's go back to our command line. And so it shows that volume that we have here. I'm going to export that volume so we can do some stuff with it also, so I don't have to keep typing it. So let's go inspect that volume and see what's going on with it. So it's PVC, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's attached on 155. Um, it has labels, all this kind of cool stuff, and it's up and running. So maybe I'm going to take this and I want to do some... Um, I'm going to make this pod, instead of replication factor of one, um, I want it to be highly available. I'm going to put it in production, for instance. So all I have to do is change the replication factor to two, and it will go ahead and um, start the copy of all the data to a, a, another node in the cluster. So you don't have to delete the whole volume, recreate it, and, and, um, and attach a new volume. So now we'll go inspect it again, and now my HA is 2, and it's running on 193 and 155. 
So um, pretty easy to go and take a look at that and change all that information. Um, another cool thing is I can I can do a volume list on this guy. And I got the ID of my volume. But then I could I could do a, I could create a snapshot in any time I want. Um, you can also do this via um, uh, OpenShift, but um, I'm showing you just the command line part, portion of it. So I could go and create a snapshot of this anytime and use that snapshot to um, you know do all the testing I want to do on it. So let's go take a look at our at our uh, pod, our MySQL pod. So it's up and running. Um, it shows our PX volume. It's mounted on bar lib MySQL data. And say, hey, my volume's getting full. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. Um, I need to grow it. So instead of having to take it and copy all the data over to another volume, give it to another volume, bring it back up, all that kind of fun stuff, all I have to do is go, hey, change that volume from 15 to 30 gigs. And it does it all on the fly. The cool thing about it is that you don't have to do anything to the container itself. It just shows uh, more storage, right? So a couple cool things, um, just brief things that I showed you what Portworx can do um, in this in this demo. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at jake at portworx.com. And thanks for watching.